Hello, I'm Carly from O'Brien Dental Lab. Emacs restorations have become extremely popular in the last several years, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the two production methods for Emacs and how they differ. Emacs is a trade name for lithium to silicate, which is a glass ceramic that is both strong and aesthetic. Emacs is so aesthetic, in fact, that it doesn't require veneering ceramic and instead can be built as a full contour monolithic restoration. The two methods for creating an Emacs restoration are pressing and milling. The pressing method involves waxing up the restoration, investing, and burning out the wax, and then pressing the superheated lithium desilicate into the negative space left from the burned out wax. To get the full benefit of lithium desilicate, it needs to be pressed instead of milled. In fact, in the original patent for lithium disilicate, it was argued that pressing is a desirable method. According to a 2010 document published by Iva Clarvivident, pressed lithium disilicate has a fracture toughness of 2.75 MPa and a flexural strength of 400 MPa. Compare this to the milled lithium disilicate, which has a fracture toughness of 2.25 MPa and a flexural strength of 360 MPa. Fracture toughness is the ability of a material to resist surface fractures. Since a surface fracture will continue to propagate through the material, the goal is to avoid them in the first place. That's why a higher fracture toughness is important for the occlusal surface. The fracture toughness is based on the size and formation of the crystals. The reason that milled Emacs has a lower fracture toughness is because the crystals are smaller and therefore less resistant to fracture. The reason for the difference in crystal size has to do with how and when the material is crystallized. Lithium disilicate that is created for the purpose of pressing is fully crystallized at the factory, which results in these long crystals. These long crystals are what give lithium disilicate its high flexural strength and fracture toughness. They are also the reason why lithium disilicate can't be milled in its fully crystallized state. It's too hard and would cause grinding burrs to wear down too quickly. To make Emacs millable, the lithium disilicate is only partially crystallized at the factory, which creates a material called lithium metasilicate. Lithium metasilicate is blue in color because the shade characteristics are only gained after crystallization. Lithium metasilicate is a lot softer than lithium disilicate and is rated at about 130 MPa of flexural strength. This allows the product to be milled with diamond grinding burrs. When we talk about milling, it's important to point out that there are actually two different methods of milling, cutting and grinding. Cutting is the more precise method and uses burrs that are designed to slice away at the material in a very predictable fashion. Grinding uses diamond burrs to wear down the material into the desired shape. The biggest issue with grinding are the uneven milling pattern from the diamond particles and the fact that as the diamond burr wears down, the accuracy of the milling is reduced. The study of dental CAD CAM systems, which was published in the Journal of Dentistry, reported findings of micro cracks with depths of 40 to 60 microns when using the grinding method of milling. After the milling is complete, the lithium metasilicate can go through its final crystallization cycle. The resulting lithium disilicate is very different than its pressed counterpart, which has to do with the shorter crystals that are formed when using the two-step crystallization method. These short crystals are the reason for the drop in both flexural strength and fracture toughness. At O'Brien, it's our goal to always give our customers the very best product we can, which is why we only use the pressing method for fabricating our Emacs restorations. I hope you found this video helpful, and as always, please feel free to contact us with any questions.